Hey YouTube, in this video I just wanted to show Unity's new input system as well as how to use the player input manager to easily add local multiplayer into your games. Alright, so the first thing we have is a new, brand new project and under window I'm going to go to package manager and then under advanced I'm going to click on show preview packages and then scroll down to input system it says preview 0.9.0 click on install this will only take a few moments and the reason I wanted to make this video was because there are several videos showing how to use the input system but none of them really showed how to actually add more than one player into a game so hopefully you guys will find this useful alright so this pop-up will come up uh, just click yes And just wait for it to finish. Alright, now we can close this. Now in order for the inputs to be read correctly, we actually have to restart the editor, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. Alright, oh, and then I'm going to reopen it. Alright, now we are ready to go. So the first thing we need to do is under Assets and Create, go all the way to the bottom where it says Input Actions. And since we'll be moving a cube in this video, I'll just call this Cube Input. And off to the right in the Inspector, click on Edit Asset. And this is where we'll be adding all of our actions. So the first thing under here we need to do is click on the plus symbol under action maps. And then I'm just going to call this cube. And then to the right under actions, I'm going to double click on new action and I'm going to rename it to move. And for this, I want to actually read the input from my left stick on the gamepad. So instead of a button, I'm going to go choose value. And under control type, I'm going to click on stick. And under binding, if you click on this drop down, there's a listen button. Go ahead and click on listen. And now wiggle your left stick on the gamepad. I'll go ahead and choose gamepad. All right, and I'm going to add a couple more actions just so you can see how to do it. I'll click on this plus symbol. And I'm going to call this one move up. And I'll actually leave it as a button. Under binding, I'll click on the drop down, click on listen, and I'm going to click a button on, press a button on my gamepad. And then I'll create one more action called move down. Same thing, it'll be a button, and I will click on the drop down, click on listen, and I'm going to press a button on the gamepad. Alright. So those are the only actions I'm going to define for this video. Uh, make sure you click on Save Asset. Um, anytime you make a change, you'll, you need to click on Save Asset, otherwise it won't actually apply. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is create a cube. So I'm going to right click, go to 3D Object, Cube. And I'm going to add a component, and I'm going to look for Player Input. So click on that component, and in this component it's looking for an action, so we can drag our cube input that we just created into there. Alright, and under the default action map, if we had more than one, it would list several here, but we only have one, so let's click on cube. And notice under here it says the messages that will be sent. If we click off the cube and then click back onto it again, you'll notice a couple more will show up called on move, on move up, and on move down. And those correspond to whatever we call the actions in here for this particular action map. And those are the functions we'll need to define in the controller for this cube, which we will do right now. So I'll go to add component and type cube controller. And once that shows up, I'll double click on it here. Alright, so let me go ahead and create those three functions. They were on move, so void on move. 
And I hate this autocomplete. And for now, I'll just do a debug message to the console. I'll just say moving. Oops. All right, and I'll copy and paste this two more times. And I'll call the, this one on move up. And the next one will be on move down. So I'll just change this to say moving up and moving down. All right, I'm going to save this, go back to my Unity project. And if I click on the game view, let me go ahead and save my project and click on play. All right, so I'm going to grab my game pad and now I'm wiggling the left stick. And if I go to the console, you can actually see that it, it the count keeps going up as I wiggle the left stick. I'm going to press the button for move up on the game pad. And I'm going to press the button for move down on the game pad. All right, so we know everything is working. Let me go ahead and exit play mode. And now what I'm going to do is actually make the cube do something. To store the value of what I get from the left stick, I need a vector2. So I'm going to go ahead and create a vector2, and I'll just call this I for input movement. And then I'm going to create a float for move speed. Actually, let's call this move speed. And I'll just default that to 10. And using the input system, um, what we'll get in on move is something called an input value, which will currently just be underlined. And I'll just call this value. All right. And if we click on input value and hit Alt Enter, we have several options. We want to choose the one that says player input or sorry, rather the one that ends with player input. And to actually set the vector2 that we defined up top, I am going to type I movement equals, and we'll say value.get, and it will be a vector2. And then we just need the parentheses. And now every time we use the left stick, that'll be stored into this iMovement variable. All right. And for on move up, it's just a button press. Um, so we don't actually need to be passing anything into the functions. It, it would be a float if, in case you're curious. But I will go ahead and say transform.translate. And I'll just say transform.up for this one. I'm going to copy that and paste it here, and I'll just say negative transform.up. And to actually use this move i movement variable, we're going to create a move function, which I'll just throw an update. So I'll just type move. Sorry for the typos. Um, I'm just trying to get through this really quickly because the wife has the kids out, and I only have about 15 minutes, so it was either get to my giant backlog of games or try to make this tutorial real quick. So I decided to make the tutorial. <laughs> so I'll say void move and there's that lovely autocomplete again. All right, so to move, I'm just going to move the cube left, right, and forward and back using this vector two. So I'm going to first define a vector three called movement. And I'll say, New vector three, and I'm going to say i movement dot x for the x value zero for the y because we'll use on move up and on move down for that, and i movement dot y for the z value which is forward and back, and I'll just call it transform dot translate, and I'll say movement. Oops, sorry, movement. Oh, and I forgot up here, I'm gonna multiply that by my move speed, otherwise it'll be very slow. And then time dot delta time. All right, I think that is all we need. I saved the script, let's go back into Unity. Let me go ahead and test that out now. I'll hit play. And using the gamepad, I'll 
wiggle around the left stick, forward, back, left, right. All right, I'm gonna hit move up and move down. And every time I press and release, it's just one action. All right, let me get out of there. And speaking of that, let me show you something real quick, just as a side note. Um, in your actions here, you can actually go to interactions over here. And if I went to press, you can actually change, you know, from press only to release only or press and release if you wanted to. Um, so if I, let's say I left it, the move down as press and release and hit save asset, go back to my game. Now every time I press and release the button for move down, you see that it moves down twice. Here again, I'll press and then release, press and release. And I notice you can actually individually add that for the bindings down here also. Um, I just wanted to throw that quick note in there. Um, you can play with the different things in there if you want to experiment. Uh, let me go back to save again. All right, so now that we have our cube, in order to actually use the multiplayer component, I'm going to create a prefab of my cube. So I'm going to create a folder. I'll call it prefabs. I'll drag my cube into there. And I'll delete it from my scene. All right, and let me create a new empty game object. I'm going to rename this to player input manager and we're only going to add one component to this and that's going to be player input manager let me click on that and you'll notice something right away that says join behavior here it says join players when a button is pressed um, there's also two others you can choose from but I'll leave it at that and you can actually limit the number of players too so if you only wanted to limit to say two people <laughs> That would be your limit. Um, I'll uncheck that for now. But it's expecting a player prefab. So let me drag my cube into there. All right, I'll save my project. And now I will click on play. So I'll grab my gamepad and I'll hit a button. And that should join one cube. And actually I have a second gamepad plugged in. Let me grab that. And I'll press the button on that gamepad and I can move that one. All right, I'm going to try moving both at the same time. And there we go. It's, very, it's harder than you think, trying to do something different for each one. Um, let me move up one and move down the other. Move down, up, everything. All right, and let me go ahead and exit play mode. And that was pretty much all you needed to add local multiplayer to your game. And using this player input on the cube and player input manager, oh sorry, let me scroll up, scroll down. Using this player input for the cube and the player input manager, which has to be in your scene, by the way, um, actually makes it very simple. Um, as you can see, we didn't need a whole lot of coding or lambda expressions or anything like that. So I think this is probably an easier way uh, if someone knows why we shouldn't do it this way, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. All right, and that is all I really had to show. I just wanted to quickly get this out before the kids came home. Uh, hopefully you all were able to find this somewhat informative. Um, and yeah, that's about it.